order. Fabulous. Right, so good evening, everybody. Um, and uh, yes, this session is, is designed for you really to ask as many questions as that you need to, um, just so that you are confident with using the Thermomix and you understand how to use it. Because what we don't want um, is that the Thermomix sits on the side um, looking fabulous and not being used. Um, as I like to say to people, nobody puts Thermomix in a corner or, and certainly not in a cupboard. Um, you know, the, the Thermomix has to be on the side and you will find you will use it multiple times a day. Um, and very quickly, people always say to me, I can't believe I didn't do this before. You know, I, I can't believe I, 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 I lived for so long without one because they are so useful. Um, so my Thermomix has just finished a pre-clean. As you can see, I used it. Uh, I like to practice what I preach and I, do, I have used it multiple times today to make pizza dough. Um, for lunch, which I cooked in the uni pizza oven outside. We had some friends for lunch, so um, that's great. And I used it to make the tomato sauce to go alongside it. Um, and then this evening, um, I used one Thermomix to make a little pasta sauce for the children because I just wanted something very quick and easy. And then the other Thermomix um, sautéed some bacon uh, to go on top of the pasta sauce and then um, after it finished sauteing it bacon I cooked the spaghetti in it straight away I took the bacon out and then cooked the spaghetti in it um, so that just minimized my washing up um, so I sort of used a, a combination of, of using it manually and following a cookie dough recipe and just um, adding some ingredients um, that I wanted to use up that I had lurking in the bottom of my fridge um, so you don't have to follow the cookie dough recipes to the letter you can play about with both the ingredients and quantities the only exception to that rule is if you are using um sugar stages uh so if you're making things like caramel or fudge um you do need to make sure that you use the quantity of ingredients specified in the recipe it's just the safety feature if you try doubling it or halving it it's not going to work so that is just one thing to watch out for right so first of all i'm just going to empty this out and give it a quick rinse so i'm going to show you how to take the bowl apart um, because this is pretty useful i once um talked a customer through this as i was driving up the a1 and i can't quite believe she man i managed to explain it properly because it's, it's more of a visual thing um so let's just get that view coming down like that so to take the bowl apart for the first time you'll find it's really stiff the first couple of times you do this and then it will just loosen off um after the first couple of times so i would if I were you, you'll notice that I put a tea towel down just to protect my work surface. Um, and then you can see there's a little lug on the handle. If you just give it a twist like that, you can take the base off and the blades will drop out. Um, so this can then go in the dishwasher, the blades, stainless steel bowl. Um, and the, if you want to well, put the base in the dishwasher too, I tend not to. Um, just because it doesn't really come into contact with food every once in a while I, I put it through just to give it a clean off um, but generally I would just put this into the sort of the main um, part of the dishwasher and then I put the blades into the cutlery rack um, then you can also put this in the dishwasher and a little tip at the moment it's quite useful because we've got lots of sun if you make a curry or something that uses turmeric you will find this gets stained a lovely shade of yellow um, and in particular, the rubber, the nice sort of clear plastic rubber seal around the outside um, also turns yellow. Um, really easy fix on this. Just put it outside in the UV light for an hour or so um, and it will just bleach out the stain. Um, so it, it, that's quite handy if you get um, turmeric stains or tomato stains on your clothes as well. I just put them in the sun um, and generally the sun works its magic. Um, right, so to put the bowl the blades back in the bowl you drop them in from the top like this and then just hold the top part of the blades flip it upside down and then you have to just do it in reverse so you put your base on just set it just off slightly off center and then just use your sort of forefinger just put some and use your forefinger just to click it into position like that. 
so can I just ask everybody to mute unless you want to ask a question let's just mute everybody because otherwise I get sort of a bit of feedback in my ear and it's a little bit distracting so let me just put everybody on mute um there we go and mute hi Joe just put you on mute if you want to ask a question please do unmute yourself or um just pop a question in the chat there is a chat button if you're on a laptop there is a chat uh, button on the bottom toolbar of your screen um if you're on a phone i think you have to just tap on the, the bottom of the screen and the chat function can be found under the three dots on the right hand side with more okay so that is the thermomix bowl um, um, then we've got this is the simmering basket it's called the simmering basket because generally it is used to cook rice or vegetables so it, it's usually used inside the thermomix that just sits in like that you'll notice there is a little sort of um, hole uh, on one side of it where the hinge part is I tend to put that hole facing the handle reason being is because you can use your spatula Got my little three year old just coming from her bath. Um, so this is the, the spatula. Yours is black, mine is green with my name on it. As you can see, I'm not showing off, I promise. Um, they gave us all these last year, which I thought was quite a nice touch actually for our 50th anniversary. And you can clip your spatula in. Can you see to that little hole? So it just means that you can take it out safely when it's been um, cooking. Um, so you don't have to sort of just, you know, play hot potato with your fingers and try and lift it out. Just remember that you've got that little lip on the spatula. You can click it in and safely pull it out. So they're fantastically designed, really. They, 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 everything has been thought through very carefully. And then you'll notice there's a little recess on the handle. So the idea of that is that you can then balance this sort of lip of your spatula on the handle. And so uh, the contents will just drain into, I've just let somebody else in, contents will drain back down into the bowl. So that can be really helpful as well. So that's the simmering basket. On the front, you'll notice that there are vents. Um, so these, these can be used as, as sieves. So if you make the lemonade or some of the um, like orange aid, like, um, strawberry lemonade recipes, you will use your simmering basket as a bit of a sieve. So it goes in here and you just pour out like that call coming through let me just send that to voicemail okay so don't forget you've got these vents on the front and then you can just hold your simmering basket in place and just pour out into a jug so that is really helpful too so that's your simmering basket you've got your lid two two components to the lid obviously the large flat part and then this is called the measuring cup and it's uh, called the measuring cup because it literally is a measuring cup so you've got a 50 mil measure um to sort of halfway up the cup and then 100 mil, mil measure up to the top. Um, again, multifunctional and they're designed to be as versatile as possible. Can you just pick up that call and just get rid of them? Tell them I'll call them back. I don't know who it is, but I think they've tried my mobile, so they're keen to get hold of me. Um, so it, um, it sits in the centre of the measuring of the lid. And then um, on some recipes, it will say, put the measuring cup in. So put measuring cup into mixing bowl lid. And then on some recipes, it will say, remove the measuring cup because you want the steam to escape. And generally when it says that, it will ask you to put either the simmering basket on the top like that or the aroma, just to act as a bit of a splatter guard. It may even ask, or the splatter guard, which is another accessory that comes with your thermomix. So this is called the splatter guard. And this splatter guard is usually used for high temperature when you're doing a high temperature saute. And each, if you're doing it on the guided recipe, it will tell you to put the splatter guard on the top. So the idea of it is, is it sits on the top and then the locking arms from here will just lock around. There's two little you see the two little wings on the side, the locking arms just lock in and lock that splatter guard into place um, so it can't be taken off. Um, if you want to stop and have a look at any time, um, you just press this big silver button here and this will stop, stop 
um, any recipe cooking. I suggest you don't do that in the middle of sugar stages because it will then not allow you to go back into the recipe where you left off. But any other recipe, um, if you want to stop and have a look or add something extra in, just remember you can press that silver button. There will usually be a 20 second countdown and that's just if it's been cooking, um, it just counts down 20 seconds in order to let the steam settle so that when you take the lid off, you are not hit in the face with a load of steam. So again, that's a great safety feature um, and really low, useful to know if you're letting kids um, use your Thermomix. Um, so the, the whole idea of these is it makes cooking as, as, as effortless um, and, and easy and as smart as possible. And uh, every element of the Thermomix has, has really been very carefully thought through. So this is the Veroma. Um, dish. Now, what often catches people out, first of all, is that there is such a thing as a Varoma temperature, and I'll show you where that is on the temperature dial. Um, and, the, and there is also a Varoma attachment. Generally, if the way to remember it is if you're using the Varoma attachment, you generally need to be using a Varoma temperature. That is a steaming temperature. It's just above 120 degrees. So it will ensure that the steam is generated from whatever you've got in here, whether that's water or stock or a sauce, um, there will be enough steam to be able to cook through what is in your Varoma attachment. So the Varoma sits on top of the mixing bowl lid with the measuring cup out because you need the steam to come up through it. And you just sit it on top like that. Um, sometimes if you are uh, cooking a chicken, you won't have the tray. You will just sit the chicken in here and then the lid on and you would have some water or stock in here um, and, and you can cook through a whole chicken in about an hour or, or steam it through um, using the Varoma. There are many what we call multi-level recipes um, which is where you would be generally cooking a um, like a sauce or a soup in the bottom of your Thermomix in the mixing bowl you would be steaming something else, maybe some rice in here. Then you would have the lid on. Then you would have your something else being steamed in the bottom part of the Varoma. And then maybe some chicken or salmon fillets being steamed in the top part of the Varoma. So they are um, what we call our multi-level recipes. And they are what the Thermomix is known for. Um, it's a really energy efficient way of cooking because if, of course, you're making use of the, 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 the residual heat that is coming off whatever you're cooking in here to then cook through what you've got in the Varoma. So, um, you know, in this day and age of insane energy prices, um, this is going to be one, you're going to be really grateful for having your Thermomix because um, not only does it minimise your own sort of energy expenditure, but it will also minimise the energy that you have to pay for through your um, electricity bills as well. Um, and, and, and it does that in a number of ways, just generally being quite an energy efficient machine, but also you can minimise a lot of the washing up. Um, you can be quite clever about how you sort of phase your cooking um, and just do um, a sort of a bit, a bit of a pre-wash in between and everything is just done in the Thermomix. So there's only this really to wash up at the end rather than having multiple pots and pans and frying pans and God knows what um, all around your kitchen. So you're going to be grateful for it because your kitchen will always be clean and tidy as a result of you funneling everything through your Thermomix. So that's what I try and do now. I get seriously cross if I have to use a pan on my hob and I've got this beautiful induction hob behind me and it hardly ever gets switched on now. Uh, so it means I don't have to clean that either, which is brilliant. Okay, so the last accessory that comes with the Thermomix is this whisk. And so this is what you generally use if you're whipping egg whites or um, cream. Uh, and the way you put your whisk in, this is quite important, is you just pop it in over the blades Give them a little twist like that, give it a little twist, just so that it sits up against one of the blades. It doesn't matter which one, it can be that you'll notice there's a high blade and a low blade. You probably can't see the difference there, but if you look at your own bowl, you can. Um, so if you just insert it over the top and just give it that little sort of twist so it knocks against the side of one of the blades, uh, to all intents and purposes, that is locked into position. So it, it will come out with a bit of pressure um, but as long as the Thermomix is not going above speed four, um, it will stay inside um, on top of the blades. You'll notice yeah. that there's a little number on here. I don't know if you can pick that up. 
um, but it will say max four. So uh, that's just a little reminder, but if you're using a guided recipe, it will not take you above speed four. So don't worry about it. It's just if you're using it manually. In fact, I think there's an Instagram video of Tom Aiken doing something with it and he uses it at speed eight um, and got away with it actually. Uh, but it is best to remember that if you do use it at a high speed, it is liable to ping off. If you haven't correctly inserted it and given it that little twist, it might ping off as well. Um, and unfortunately, when the blades are turning quite quickly, um, this accessory is at risk. Is it's one of the sort of the most often things that customers and new customers in particular end up replacing um, because it get caught. It, it will get caught by the blades, turning blades, and then you'll end up with a, a blended whisk <laughs> um, in your mashed potato, which isn't particularly appetising. Um, so just if you can try and remember to give it a little twist, it shouldn't happen. Okay, so I think they are all the, oh, oh yes, and of course you'll also have, so if I've got one here, most of you will have this blade cover as well. Um, so the blade cover is the only optional accessory. Um, and the idea of this is that it's used for, if you want to sous vide or slow cook, it just stops the blades coming into contact with the meat. You, you just pop it in over the top of the blades and that's it. Really, uh, you'll notice there's, it's got a slightly raised profile on one side and a recess on the other. So the raised profile just goes to the top. And this is what you also use for doing your potato peeling. OK, so that that will double as a potato peel or a peel or cob or eggs or uh, garlic and ginger um, and um, carrots and just generally make your life a little bit easier. I think that's all of the parts of the thermomix. I'm just going to move them to one side and then I'm just going to have a look at the thermomix screen with you. So I will just put my other um, laptop there and there's a bit of a glare, sorry, from the light ring. But hopefully you'll see both me now and the thermomix screen. So this, when you switch your thermomix on, you will have three dials on the front of your screen. That is called your, your home screen. So your first dial is your time, second is your temperature, and your third dial is the speed. And all Thermomix recipes will give you a time, a temperature, and a speed. And it's nothing, it, it, it might seem a bit strange or you know different at first, but if you think about the way you cook, cooking is really just a function of those those three things, isn't it? How long you cook something for. So if you're sauteing onions, you might saute them in a pan, in a frying pan for five minutes or so. Um, what sort of temperature? So generally you're looking at about 100 degrees when you're sauteing. Um, although you won't know that in a frying pan, you'll just sort of turn it to a kind of a me you know, medium heat, I suppose, medium to high heat. Um, and then how often you have to stir something in a pan. So that, that's what this button is really. Um, so, it, 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 like I said, a lot of customers get uh, uh, quite anxious sometimes to think they don't they don't know how they don't quite understand those those buttons. But really, you've just got to think of it as just how you how you cook. Sometimes you apply heat, other times you don't. If you're blending a milkshake, for example, you won't have any heat. If you're frying onions, you will. If you're slow cooking, you'll have a slightly lower heat. Um, if you are making caramel, you'll have a higher heat. Um, so really it is, when you think it through, it is quite logical. So you type, So to operate um, th those buttons, just um, touch the dial and the dial will enlarge and whichever dial is enlarged, this speed selector button here, this silver button will operate. So I'm just gonna turn it round I'll put the lid on because it won't light it in a minute if it doesn't have a lid on and so you can set your time so this is only if you are using your thermomix manually but the, for the guided recipes all of the time and the temperature is always preset to you and then you start to set a step just by twisting the speed selector dial to the speed that it tells you on the screen but I'll show you that in a minute then this temperature, so temperature goes all the way from 37, which is used when heating up liquid um, for bread making, 37 to 40, all the way round to this Varoma temperature here. So you've got your Varoma temperature on the temperature dial 
And generally, if you are using that Varoma attachment, that is what you want on the Varoma, on the, on the temperature dial. And then your speed goes all the way from gentle stir and then up in increments of like half a degree, all the way round to speed 10. And at speed 10, the blades are going at about 250 kilometers an hour. So don't put your fingers in the basically. <laughs> I mean, it is quite difficult, really. And you would want your measuring cup on um, because, as you can imagine, if you've got something in there and you're blending at speed 10, it's going to shoot out the top. So you'd always have your, your measuring cup in. Now, um, if you see a, a recipe calling to put the blades into reverse, all you do is tap. You can see there's a little speed or a little blade icon there on the speed dial. Um, you just tap it, your green reverse um array will come on it tells you reverse has been enabled um, and reverse means if you look at the thermum explode i don't know if i've got any to hand uh da, 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 da. If you look at the blades let's just drop out this blade you'll see that one side is is thin i don't know if you can pick that up here one side is thin and the other side is thick so that's your blunt edge it's a lot thicker that edge than this edge which is sharp so when they spin in a clockwise direction your sharp edge is in contact with the food and that's when it's going to be doing the mincing and the chopping and the grinding actions and then on the other side you've got the blunt edge so when they turn in the anti-clockwise direction under when you put operate the reverse function so when it says reverse enabled your blades are going the opposite direction anti-clockwise um, and it's just doing that sort of that you've got the blunt edge in contact with the food so it's just doing that gentle stirring um, and, and it's worthwhile checking sometimes when you're doing a risotto um, again through a, um, a guided recipe on cookie do your reverse function will automatically come on sometimes though it's it, it is quite easy to inadvertently touch this dial um, so just make sure if you are doing something like slow cooking or risotto that you've got that little green arrow on when you've got the rice and the stock cooking away. Okay, so that's that's the um, the home what we call the home screen with the three dials. Then if you swipe towards the left, the so swipe across, it brings up all the modes. Now all of these modes come on automatically when you're following a guided recipe. Um, but if you are just going to use your Thermomix manually, you might just want to put the scales on. So you can at any point, let's just grab a bowl. You can at any point use the scales. As long as your Thermomix is not going above speed, I think it's three and a half, um, you can then put a bowl on the top while it's cooking away and use it as a set of scales. So you just press this green tear button. Can you see I've got my, and then you can just weigh in like that okay so um often you know if i'm making pizza dough i would just weigh in all my ingredients the flour the um, water the sugar the salt and the um yeast uh, and then once i've weighed it all in using the scales i just click on dough and then i usually set two minutes on the clock so you'll notice that the time dial is um enlarged so that means you can set the time using this button and then just to set off your dough mode, you just need to click on that. Once you set the time, this dial will shrink, this dial will enlarge, and it tells you turn speed selector to start it. And it's just going to need away. Okay, so that's your need function. But again, if you're following a pizza dough or any bread dough recipe on Cookie Do, these will automatically come on. Turbo is used for, um, it's a very, very intense burst of speed, basically. Um, so it's used for grinding grains into flour, coffee beans into ground coffee. Um, it's good for chopping nuts. Sometimes it's used for chopping up meat, mincing meat as well. And you can alter the time between half a second, one second, and two seconds. And then, I would just put it in there. Um, and then to start it, you just push the dial. Now, once turbo has been operated, in order to get your arm to unlock, you just need to press that home button again. Um, 
it should reset automatically on a guided recipe, but if you're just using it manually, um, you just need to remember to use the home button. Um, then you've got your pre-clean mode, lots of customers' favourite mode. Um, and you can, what you need to do with this, the first time you operate these modes, there is a little information screen that comes up and tells you how to use it. Um, you can just um, tell it that you don't want to see that again, or you can leave it on if you want to. So you just need to say, do not show this message again once you've got your head around it. Um, so what you do with this is that you put enough water in. I usually just cover the blades, or sometimes I add it up to sort of about a half litre. Uh, drop of washing up liquid. Don't get carried away with the, the washing up liquid or you will turn your Thermomix into a bubble machine, as many customers have done, but it isn't one of the approved uses of Thermomix. Um, and you can select uh, what it's been doing. So you've got an option for if you've been making dough, um, it will run a specific program to clean sort of the, the stickier, stickier mixture off your, off your bowl. Um, generally, I run it on universal. Um, Fat and caramel, if you've been sort of making uh, particularly greasy um, or, you know, fatty uh, meals, then um, it just heats up to a high temperature, basically, just to remove that grease. Um, I don't, in principle, find the browning function really works. This, this is um, used, they say it's used to remove a browned base. Um, but I think if you do end up having some burnt food, on the bottom of your bowl, the only really way that you get rid of it is by just scraping it off using a, I use like a nylon Brillo pad to get rid of it. Uh, blender, obviously you can just chuck, chuck everything into the um, Thermomix and blend. So you, you, you can again fiddle about with the time and then your blend speeds range from six round to eight. Now, if I'm gonna make a smoothie or something, generally I just go onto my home screen. Um, and I just whack my, my um, speed dial around to about speed 10 and just blend it up like that. Um, but again, the blend function will come on if you're making things like hummus on a, a guided recipe. So you've got your egg boiler. Um, the key thing with the egg boiler is to remember that you need your eggs cold from the fridge. Um, if you don't, if they're not fridge temperature and they're room temperature, then the timings will just need to be adjusted slightly. Um, so all of the guided recipes are calculated quite specifically. So if you deviate from the recipe um, in any way, you are not guaranteed that consistent restaurant quality result. So um, I end up, I never keep my eggs in the fridge. And so I tend to reduce the timings by about a, a one to two minutes. Um, but that is a bit trial and error. And the whole point of having this is it's very precise. So if you can remember to keep them cold from the fridge, all the timings and um, are, are calibrated uh, on that basis. So you can add, add your eggs in with some water and you can tell it how you want um, them cooked. So lots of customers absolutely love this. And, and it's funny because I've had um, sort of people's partners um, sort of take the mickey out of them for spending a thousand pounds on an appliance to boil their eggs and you know it's a it's a lot of money just to boil your eggs and then they become very obsessed with that function themselves and can't help but show it off to all their friends when they come round um so it's yeah it can be very useful um then you've got a kettle function um, so you can um, heat up your water to a certain temperature again. I mean, you've probably all got kettles in your homes, but if you're traveling and you're away with your Thermomix or if you're sort of limited space, you're in a caravan or a, you know, a, 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 like a motorhome touring around, then instead of having a separate kettle, you can obviously use your Thermomix as a kettle as well. And you can just alter the temperature so you can, I think that when you make coffee, you're supposed to brew your coffee at a slightly lower temperature. So obviously you're able to just um, uh, alter the temperature accordingly. Oh, you know, so warm up mode, you can heat your leftovers up. And if I was going to use um, warm up mode, I would also insert my whisk um, just because it makes uh, the heat distribution more even. Um, I think some of these modes actually have, no, I'm not sure. No, it doesn't actually uh, tell you any more about it. Some of the modes have a little information button, warm up doesn't. 
But if you can remember, if you're sort of heating up a bolognese, if you click on warm up, it will just tell you what temperature. And generally, I would heat up to about 75. Um, that's certainly what you would do um, in a commercial kitchen. Most food would have to be heated to 75 degrees to be safe to eat. Um, and just put, put your whisk in again, then put your bolognese in and then heat it up um, using the warm up mode. Uh, thicker mode, this will come on when you're doing things like a Hollandaise sauce or a custard or a white sauce. So again, you don't need to worry too much about this as a manual mode. I would um, generally follow a guided recipe if I was making Hollandaise. Or once you've got your head around it a few times, you can just sort of weigh your ingredients in and then just um, play with the temp. I, I tend to, if I'm doing like a white sauce, I do, or a gravy, I do tend to increase the heat to 100. Um, but if I'm doing a hollandaise, then I would I, I wouldn't want my heat above 80. So it's automatically uh, defaults to 80. Um, but you do have a manual override on it if you want to. And so again, got your three dials. So whichever one is highlighted, this button will operate. So um, once you're ha happy with the temperature, and you um, you just need to click to start the mode and then it will detect how the bold quantity and then it will just um, vary the time accordingly. Um, then you've got your rice cooker. If you're going to use your rice cooker, I would recommend that you um, look at the rice cooker collection on Cookie Do. So I'll, I'll show you where to find the collections. Um, I prefer personally to steam my rice. There is a fabulous steamed rice recipe on Cookie Do. Um, so I always steam my rice. You can do a maximum of about 350 grams in here. Um, in practice, I find that um, 250 to 300 grams um, just ensures coming in just ensures a sort of a more even um, cooking. Uh, and for most families of four, 250 grams would, would be enough rice anyway. Um, and uh, yeah, so look for the steamed rice recipe on Cookie Do. It's fabulous. Um, and there's a cumin rice as well, which a lot of people use. If, if they are having a takeaway, a lot of people will cook, they'll just cook their rice in the thermomix um, just because it saves money a little bit. Let me just, um, hi, Juliet. I'm just going to put you on mute. Um, okay. Fermentation mode. So this is really use, useful um, when you make yogurt. And again, uh, it's kind of unlikely that you would run it in the fermentation mode manually because you would probably be following a guided recipe. But if you want to, you've got a time which you can alter. So I, I when I make my yogurt, I usually um, uh, alter the time to 10 minutes. And then the temperature is usually around 70 degrees um, because by the time you have got your yogurt jars in here. So if you're making yogurt in these little jars, I can show you my jars. Um, I made all my yogurt in, um, in the Thermomix. It saves me quite a lot of money actually. So the jars, you would just sit your jars in here. You would have some water in the bottom. There's a little information screen on there. There you go. The mode can be used to ferment yogurt or prove a yeast and aroma addition and ambient environment created by heating the water in a mixing bowl. So um, the recommendation is you add just a few drops of lemon juice. So I quite often use the concentrated lemon juice into some water. Um, and then um, you would just set the time for, usually with yogurt, it will take about 10 hours. So run overnight, uh, temperature is 70, and then you just cook it to start. If you're fermenting bread dough, um, you can, um, you, I, I would you still use about 70, but the minimum uh, time on this um, setting is an hour using the, the fermentation mode. And most bread dough will prove in about 30 minutes um, in the Varoma. So often when I'm proving bread dough, I don't know if I've got a skeleton mat, I think it's in use at the moment, I've got one here. What I do is I wrap my dough up in, a, in the silicon mat, like that. And then I pop it in the aroma, like that. And this is the equivalent of like a proving draw, basically. Um, and then I don't, I find it easier just to set 30 minutes on here. 
whatever, and then set my temperature to 70. And then I usually use about speed two. Um, it, it's fine if you're going to run fermentation for an hour, but uh, the, 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 it is an hour minimum on fermentation mode. So um, and bread dough will, will, will prove quite um, happily in, in 30 minutes on this basis. So um, an hour would mean it is it runs the risk of being slightly overproof. You can prove your um, bread dough inside a tin, as long as your tin fits. There's a lovely um, farmhouse sandwich loaf recipe. It's an American recipe. Um, and you make your dough in your Thermomix and you decant it into a tin. You don't even need to shape it. Um, and then you put your water in here, put your tin in here, lid on. 30 minutes later, your loaf is ready to put in the oven. It is fabulous. Um, so that's that's really useful to know. Uh, slow cook. Um, again, you've got your three dials. You can alter your time and your temperature. Um, I would use if you're going to use it as a slow cooker. I would look at a slow cooker recipe on Cookie Do. Um, then you can sous vide with it. So this is basically just constant temperature water bath. Um, there are sous vide guides on Cookie Do, and you can read about how to use um, how to sous vide vegetables and um, protein like um, some form of fish or uh, steak online. Um, but generally, uh, what sous vide is, is a method of cooking where you put uh, the, the food you're going to cook in a vacuum sealed bag. You can do it using a, a Ziploc bag. You don't have to have a vacuum sealer, but you expel all the air and then you drop it into a constant temperature water bath um, and you can alter the temperature. So if you're doing steak, for example, you would probably use 55 degrees for about for 30 to, to 40 thank you darling 30 to 45 minutes or so um and then just click the button to start um so there are lots of sous vide if you if it's a style of cooking that you want to experiment with i would just go back to cookie do and have a look through the guides um they are fantastic and then just follow one of the recipes and it will tell you how to do it step by step um, then you've got the potato peeler mode. So this is where your peeling accessory is used. And again, you've got your information screen. You put some water in, you put your, your peeling um, blade cover in, you put your potatoes in, and then you just click start for four minutes. So if you're peeling potatoes, you use about four minutes. If you're peeling something like ginger, which is a lot softer, you, you, it may, the skins may rub off in a, a minute or two. Um, and that's all the modes covered, I think, for now. Um, OK, so if you swipe, so let's go to the home screen again. So swipe that way, you get the modes. Swipe back, you get the home screen. Swipe the other way again, and you get your cookie do interface. So you can search cookie do directly on your TM6, which is a feature that was new to the TM6. You couldn't do this with the TM5. You would have to use the app and then upload it to a dongle that sat on the side. Um, so this just makes the whole process of finding and making recipes a lot slicker. Um, so you can you can scroll through. I mean, personally, I think it's easier to, to use Cookie Do on the app rather than the screen. Um, the only time I really um, use this screen to search recipes, if, we, if I know what recipe I want to cook, then I just press that little magnifying glass on the top right and then you can search Cookie Do. For example, if I was going to make the infamous butter chicken, I would just type in butter chicken. This is one of the most brilliant recipes. I, I do this a lot of demos and it always goes down a storm. Um, so if you haven't made butter chicken, get it on your list um, for uh, the next week or so, and you will be absolutely blown away by it. Um, so it will give you all the options, various different um, recipes. And then once you found the one that you wanted, just click on it, click start cooking, and then it will it will um, start with um, asking you to put a bowl on the top of the mixing bowl lid, um, and into that bowl you are going to weigh some chicken. Um, so the idea of this is that you're just going to put your chicken in, and then weigh in some tikka paste, remove it, um, stir it together. And then you're going to start your main recipe, building up the curry. 
So this is how the recipe looks on the screen. So at any point, if your scales are not reading zero, just press that tear button. So your first step is putting in your ghee. If you don't have ghee, you can use vegetable oil. Sometimes I'll put a little bit of butter in with a bit of um, vegetable oil as well. It doesn't matter. You can also make your own ghee in a the thermomix. Then it's saying, put that measuring cup into the mixing bowl lid. And then you've got a minute on the clock showing your aroma temperature, and then you turn that selector dart to speed one, and it's going to heat it up. So the idea of this is that it's going to make the oil nice and hot, a bit like uh, when you would saute something in a frying pan, you will add the oil in first, wouldn't you? Heat it up, make it nice and hot, and then you would, then you would throw your vegetables in. Okay, so just imagine it's done that step. You'll notice I press this button just to stop it. You do at every step get, let's just put in the onion chili. It will tell you, so the instruction for the speed selector is always found at the bottom. So it's a question I often get asked face to face is, oh, how did you know to turn it to speed five, for example? Um, and the answer to that is because it, it tells you, you don't have to think about it, it just tells you. So turn that round to speed five, and it's going to do the job um, which it's been designed to do for that particular step. So in this case, it's mixing up the onion and the garlic and the chili that we, we put in together in the ginger. It's gonna chop it for five seconds. So really you don't need to do any of that boring old chopping lark ever again when you have a firm <laughs> Um, because it does it for you, which is fabulous. Um, it even tells you to sort of scrape down the side. So if you can read and look here, it's saying, Take the measuring cup out and put that simmering bowl on the top. So if you can read, you can use a thermomix. Every step, is, it, just, it just walks you through it on a very clear, very easy basis. Um, at any time in the recipe, you've got three dots there. You can look at the overview of the recipe. Um, so you can look at the recipe details. You just click the down arrow. You can scroll through so you can see what ingredients you need to get out. You can look at the steps that are going to be involved. Um, it will also, every recipe will give you the nutritional breakdown as well. And there are um, some uh, tips sometimes and, and useful extra pieces of information um, that it gives you. Um, okay, so you can, if you want to, if you're just having a look at the sort of the start of the recipe and you know you want to skip immediately to a particular step, you can, just click on that step and it will take you straight to that step of the recipe from that recipe detail. If inadvertently, you, if inadvertently rather you click out of a recipe, um, you can then just see, see you've got this little green bookmark. It will save exactly where you are. So you just go back into that bookmark and you can go back to that particular step. So it's again, it's really, really user friendly. And it thinks of everything that can possibly make that cooking process a lot easier for you. Um, you can open preview as well. So if you want to just click through on the Thermomix screen while it's cooking a step, it will just show you what's coming next on the recipe. So you can sort of get your ingredients ready and know exactly what is going to happen with them. Um, so I've opened preview, so I just need to close preview. If ever you want to put your scales on while you're cooking, you can. You can put your scales on. And then as long as it's not above speed three and a half, as I said, you can put a bowl on and weigh. Um, and then, if you wanted to cancel the recipe, obviously you can just come out of it and, and cancel it. All of your recipes you will find that you've cooked recently are in your recently cooked folder. So if ever you have, so you can see what I, I've been doing, lots of them, if ever you have to, um, if, if you have to do a factory reset, and sometimes it happens, um, what will happen is you will, you will just lose the recipes in your recently cooked because um, these are all stored on the hard drive. You won't lose all the data that is stored on your cookie do recipe app. So that is stored on the app, it's completely separate. This is just the screen through which you access the app. So 
don't be intimidated by the fact if you're ever told that you need to do a factory reset, you're not going to lose all of your cookie view data, but you will use the, lose things like the sounds and settings um, that you have uh, manually uh, created in the Thermomix, and you will use lose your recently cooked history. So it's worth knowing that if you're going to travel with your Thermomix and you don't have access to Wi-Fi and um, yet the phone signal's a bit dodgy, so you can't connect your um, your phone to to your um, to your Thermomix because you can hotspot off your phone if need be. Um, if you program if you click through a couple of steps in every recipe you want to cook while you're away they will automatically go into your into be saved onto the hard drive so if you know you're going to be away for a week or two and you know what recipes you're going to cook if you're that sort of organized person which i'm not uh, you can load them all into cookie or onto your screen click through a couple of steps and then they will appear automatically in your recently cooked screen so um that that's quite useful to know if you don't if you're worried about your wi-fi access and you can't and, and, and your mobile phone signal is a bit rubbish um so that's that's pretty handy um what else can i tell you okay so your recipes are that you so on, through the cookie view app you can create your own recipe folders so you can um save recipes on the app to specific folders so you'll see I've got things like um, chicken and um, Asian food and cakes and all sorts of stuff, healthy, free from. So I've, I've created folders through the app and then I've just organized my recipes into that folder. So I know all the Asian recipes that I'm interested in cooking are just available at the touch of a butter or the touch of a screen. So they, these are all the um, recipes I've collected through the app into my Asian folder. So it will exactly reflect what you see on the on the recipe app. OK, uh, you can uh, also save collections so you can search recipe. You can search cookie view rather at both the recipe level and and collections as well, which is just like cookery books. And you can save those all to your cookie view account. Um, so sticking with the curry theme, um, you can click on, for example, I've saved the Taste of India collection to my cookie do um, account, and then it's accessible through my Thermomix screen. So all the recipes from that particular cookery book are all just accessible directly through the Thermomix screen. And so our collections range from small collections of sort of eight to 10 recipes through to all the cooking books that we publish. So there are some hard copy cookbooks available, a bit like the Simple Ideas book that came um, with your Thermomix. But you know, it, sometimes it's nice to have pretty pictures and get a bit of inspiration. But actually, um, one of the great things, again, with the Thermomix is you've got 80,000 recipes available at the touch of your fingertips. You don't have to have hundreds of recipe books gathering dust at home. And you can also create your own recipes um, and save them. So you can write them in a Thermomix format um, and then save them to your Cookie Do account. So you would do that through the Cookie Do app as well. So that's where any created recipes um, would be stored. And then bookmarks are just your sort of favorite recipes. So any recipe that you've bookmarked will automatically appear in your bookmarked area. Um, so my week, so the weekly planner, you, you, you would sort out what you want to cook this week. So you can see these are the sort of the three, I couldn't make up my, my mind quite what I was gonna cook for the kids tonight. And I sort of did elements of each meal really, um, mainly because I wanted to use up a load of old veg um, in the vegetable drawer. And this pasta with vegetable ragu um, does that brilliantly. You can chuck in anything you like really. And the high temperature function comes on at the start. So it just brings out the natural sweetness of the vegetables. It's a great, great little recipe. And then I just fried off some bacon and added it on top. Um, so you can plan out what you want to cook. You can't do this through the Thermomix screen. You have to do it through the recipe app. The only thing that you can really do when you're looking at recipes through the search function um, is cook today. You can just cook immediately. You can click on it and, and click start cooking. But what you can't do is put add that banana bread recipe to my planner um, on the Thermomix screen. 
you would have to do that through using the app. And I'll show you how to do that in a minute. Um, right, let's go back to that. Um, so here's my weekly planner. I'm not a great planner, I'm a bit more of a spontaneous. I, I sort of open the, um, open the fridge and then think, what next? <laughs> Um, but I like that element of cooking. Um, so we're all different, aren't we? That a lot of customers, a lot of my customers love the, the planner. It's because it can save them quite a lot of money. Um, right, under settings, this is something really important to tell you. You will want to alter this. If you click on your sounds, if I were you, give you one piece of advice, um, turn your volume button down to low and the duration down to 10 seconds. Otherwise, it will drive you slowly mad when your Thermomix will st doesn't stop digging for 15 minutes until it shuts itself down when the power switches off. Um, so I can remember sitting there feeding a baby when I first had my Thermomix, and I could just feel my pulse racing as the Thermomix just wouldn't switch off. <laughs> and I was kind of stuck feeding the baby um, and I couldn't get to it and it just it annoyed me and actually my advice my own advisor hadn't told me um, that I could actually uh, turn the volume down and uh, turn the time duration down to 10 seconds so now I make a point of telling everybody that you can you can um oh you can change the melody as well. So um, there's just a few different options for you to have a play with there and select the one that you like. Um, so yeah, just don't forget to alter the sounds. And all of these, if you do a factory reset, these settings will be overridden and they, they will go back to factory settings. So you'll just have to set them up again. Um, da, 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 what else can I tell you? So if you ever need to um, do your factory reset, it's here. Transportation mode can be useful. What the transportation mode does is it locks the arms into position, just like that. Um, so that, uh, and that's quite useful if you're if you're transporting soup. So often on the way back from demos, if I've got food still in my thermomix bowls, I will just put the transportation mode on so that you know if the soup or, or whatever the bowl is likely to come out of the, the white housing unit. So that can be quite useful. Um, da, 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 da. You can put a pin lock on it as well. So um, if you've got children around, you don't want them to use it without you being there to supervise them. You can put a pin on. Um, what else have you got? Bluetooth. You don't need to worry about Bluetooth. Bluetooth is only used um, if you've got a Thermomix friend, a companion device, and then they talk to each other um, through Bluetooth. Uh, so this is where you find your Wi-Fi. So if you are connecting to other networks, so if you take your Thermomix out of your home and put it in a friend's house or in a holiday home and want to connect to your Wi-Fi, um, all you would do is just find wh whichever network that you want and then and, um, and then connect as, as you would any other device. Um, okay. Um, and then under help, so help, uh, this is this can be quite useful. If you ever want to get in touch with Thermomix, you've got all the contact details there, the phone number, the email address. Um, it's probably better to call Thermomix rather than email them. They, they're a little bit slow at responding to emails at the moment. So if you've got sort of a pressing issue, um, it's probably worth trying to call them early. So their office is open from nine. And generally, they're pretty good at picking up the phone first thing in the morning. And then your instruction manual is also on the Thermomix screen as well, um, in case that you misplace it. Um, and then safety instructions are there as well, which automatically come on sometimes if you haven't shut your Thermomix down properly um, or you've just pulled the plug out of it inadvertently, your, your safety instructions will come on. To turn the Thermomix off, incidentally, um, just press and hold this button here. Right, so I think that's covered most of the screen. I don't think there's anything else there that I need to talk about. So now, if I just come and share my screen, I'm just gonna show you um, cookie do on here. Um, so have you all set up your cookie do accounts now? Um, because when you come to switch your Thermomix on, you need your cookie do account set up because it will ask you for your login details so it can connect the Thermomix to your cookie do account. So if you haven't already done that, you need to do that really before you go through the setup process. So um, 
I always liken this a little bit to reading the Waitrose Food Illustrated. I, I do like um, uh, the, the recipe app. And I always say to people, you know, you get, the more you sort of put in, so the more time you spend looking through the recipes, the more you'll get out of it. So you'll, you'll, you will discover so many new things. That's also the beauty of my Facebook group. So if, if some of you on here are not part of my Facebook group, which is um, called the Thermomix Wiz customer group, please do find that on Facebook and join it because that is a great source of inspiration. Lots of customers and advisors and I share recipes on there that I've done that have worked really well. Um, and occasionally people share things on there that haven't worked so well for them. Um, and it's all useful information. And, um, and generally when customers share what they've been doing, um, there'll be a, a sort of a list of comments saying, oh, great, you know, this looks good, added to my planner, thanks for that, look forward to trying it, that kind of thing. So it's there to really help and inspire you. Um, so through the Cookie Do app, you've got, um, they, they just sort of draw your attention to the latest recipes that have been launched. Um, and then what is being most cooked in the UK this week? So I'm not sure I believe Yorkshire puddings really this time of year, but there you go. I certainly believe this one. This is a lovely quick salad and a nice cocktail. And then of course, the frozen fruit ice cream, a Thermomix classic. Um, so these are one of our new collections, the Go Green Feel Good um, cookbook. This is actually available as a hard copy cookbook. So some of you have got um, vouchers um, for uh, the uh, e-shop. So if you bought after our special offer ended, so after the 4th of July, you will have a 50 pound voucher towards the e-shop. And this book, I have to say, is really good. There's some lovely um, tips in there for living um, and, and using up lots of leftovers and just being a little bit more environmentally um, conscious. So there's, there's quite a few articles written so that you can sort of click through different articles on various different cuisines and types of cooking. Um, this looks lovely. Tamarind and chili barbecue lamb chop. Um, and then there are just sort of a selection of other recipes. So it, who knew uh, National Potato Day? But these look really nice, these potato and tilagio roly polies. So this is where you can sort of um, go down rabbit uh, holes on Cookie Do and find some really interesting and, and new and different things to cook. Um, so here's our latest collection. So they will draw your attention to the latest cookbooks that are out. So Simon Rogan, he's the head chef at Long Plume, a mission starred restaurant. He's brought out some beautiful recipes for us. Um, so if you want to push yourself a little bit, you can try doing some of his um, recipes. This one looks lovely, this poached cod with burr block. Um, and then there's some you know, basic recipes. So quick bread. Um, and I haven't actually looked at this one, it's quite nice. Scones, flapjack and um, you know, a classic white sauce, or cheese sauce, I suppose, the sauce Mornay. Okay, so, so it's worthwhile having a, a, a quick scroll down through Cookie Do. Then if you go to um, the search, you'll notice it, re it, it reflects the search on the Thermomix screen that you've got. So you can search, so here we're searching at the recipe level, but notice um, you can, switch between recipes collections and in fact articles as well. Um, just going to delete that off of that filter. So if you're searching through the recipes, you can just search for anything. So again, I'll just search for chicken. It will bring me up all my chicken recipes. And then you will get, oh, it's going to need to log in. I don't know why it's dropped my login here. You get these three little dots on the side of the recipe. And you've got these options so you can either cook that today you can add it to a collection so this is how you add it to one of your collections and if you haven't got a suitable collection and when you first get started you'll be using this button this create button um, or you can add it to uh, your weekly planner so you don't want to cook it today but you want to maybe make it next um, next wednesday you can save it to your weekly planner so these are lovely, these cinnamon buns. So add to my week, might, might make those on Saturday, for example. Um, so you've got a number of different options and then you can also add the ingredients directly to your shopping list, okay? So that um, is how you search for recipes. Now, on your, I, I've always said on my welcome document, so if you've got copies of my welcome document, 
Um, there is information on how you um, set up your filters to access not just the UK recipes, but recipes from all around the world. So what you need to do is you make sure that you have your English language filter. Because you, can you see under filters here? You need to make sure you've got your English language filter option on and the UK off. And then that will find all of the recipes um, across uh, America, Canada, Australia, and New Zealand, and not just the UK ones. You can filter on lots of different things. So you can search if you, if you want to sort of search for vegetarian options or um, something that's very popular at the moment is keto options. You can apply tags. So all the recipes tagged um, with those uh, sorts of um, themes are, will be uh, collected together for you in the search. You can also search on, you know, if you want to look at just advanced recipes, if you fancy a bit of a challenge, or if you fancy, if you want um, to find a recipe because you're short on time, you can uh, filter on, on time as well. Um, and you can also just filter on like five star ratings if you want to. Um, so here you can see I've manually set up my filters um, and I've got my English filter selected and I've got my UK filter off. OK, so here this is this is the key bit I always like to talk people through um, is to save your default search filter. Um, if you just click on here, I'll show you how to do it on the phone in a minute. But you, what you need to, to make sure that you do under search filter preferences um, and on a phone screen, when you're on the recipe app, it, it brings it up. If you just click the little chef's hat icon in the top right of your screen, it'll bring it up. Um, what you need to do is just click update filter. Just make sure that English button is checked. And then scroll down and just make sure your UK button is off. OK, because if you still have that on, you're still only going to be finding the UK recipes. Um, and often when I share recipes on my Facebook group, there will always be somebody say, I can't see this recipe. And the reason they can't see it is because their filters will not be set up to access all of the English language recipes. If you find recipes in different languages, you can use Google Translate. And in fact, if you've got the Google Translate app, you could hold the app over your Thermomix screen and it will automatically translate it onto your phone. Um, so again, if you, and you, if you open the recipe, I don't have Chrome installed on this, um, on my MacBook, but if you open um, Cookie Do in Google Chrome, you automatically get a translate option for foreign recipes. So that can be really helpful. Um, so I just want to go back there. Um, so what you need to make sure is when you are searching, and if you're searching on a um, tablet or a laptop, just have this English filter here. Um, selected and then you know if you take it off you're going to find all 82,000 odd recipes but they will be in different languages <laughs> you can see there's lots of um, yeah, yeah different languages I think we I don't know how many different languages I think we've got about 20 currently um, so it is easier to restrict it to obviously the English ones that you and we've just we've got under just under 10,000 recipes so more than enough to play with I've probably done more than most, and even I haven't scratched the surface. I think I've done about 800 of the recipes on cooking food, which is quite good going, really. I was quite impressed that they told me that last year. Um, OK, uh, so if you go back to uh, my week, you will find that your shopping list um, is found under your weekly planner. Um, so you can add ingredients to your shopping or add recipes to your shopping list and then you can go to show ingredients. You can look at it either by category, which can be quite useful if you're walking around the supermarket because it gathers all the um, items together that would be found in the same aisle. Um, or you can look at it by recipe, which some people find easier. Now, if you know you've got an, a certain item in the cupboard, you can just click on it and it will remove it. So let's get rid of the salt and the pepper and the honey because I've got some of that and the mustard. Um, if there's anything extra that you want to add, 
you can add additional items. And then when you're happy with your shopping list, you can click order ingredients. It will bring up your options and you can just go and check Keep that out of the way. You can check how much it's going to cost in Tesco, then you can change the store, have a look at how much it's going to cost in Sainsbury's. You can swap out ingredients at any time for others. So if you want a particular brand or a non-branded version, you've got full control over that. Um, and then you'll be horrified when you look at Ocado because it's always loads more than Tesco and Asda. I think we might have lost a card a few customers along the way as people check their store prices. Um, but because so currently we have got these options. Let's move that out of the way. Um, so most of the major um, grocers covered, with the exception of Asda, there were, it, we did have Asda and there was a glitch with their software integration and it was the same glitch as Tesco had. Um, but Tesco seemed seem to have sorted it uh, um, and Asda haven't done yet so I am expecting I haven't heard that they're not coming back we are expecting to get them back um, but I, I do keep meaning to chase it up and find where they are um, okay so you can also share that shopping list so you can email it to yourself um, if you want to so you can copy and paste it into an email or a you know a word document or an excel spreadsheet for example um, and you can print it as well and, and you can clear everything on there um, so that makes the whole process of planning and shopping for your ingredients really easy and then obviously the thermic takes over cooks it all for you and washes it, uh, itself up at the end so it's a real kind of end-to-end -end, um, provider um, or as we used to say cradle to grave it will do absolutely everything for you Okay, um, so I think I went, I did show you uh, how to search for collections, didn't I? So you can, and, and if you're searching collections, so the exception to the rule when you're um, searching for collections is you can see immediately you've got collections from all over the world in different languages. So you do need to manually put your your country filters on. You can't filter collections on English. I don't understand why. So you would just need to go back and add in Australia, UK, the US, and you can put Canada in, although most of the Canadian collections um, do uh, are pretty much the same as the uh, US ones. Um, so there are, and, and and because we filtered on Canada, you'll also get some um, French recipes in there as well. Um, you'll notice there are some some cookie books look the same, and that's because they just some, sometimes they're duplicated in different markets. One will be a UK version, one will be a US version. Usually, the US version is in ounces, and the UK version is in grams. Um, but it's not a problem if you do inadvertently get a US recipe. Your Thermomix will automatically change its measurements to ounces um, so you can have this makes it quite easy to have a, a a look through the different collections and same principle if there's a collection that you like you can save it to your cookie do account um, and then you will find that particular collection in the my recipes so these are some of the recipes in the go green feel good book um, which are I don't think I've tried any of these yet. Actually, the tomato rice balls look quite nice. That's that's a good way of using up leftover rice. I'm not sure about that banana ketchup, but you know, I suppose it's got to be tried. <laughs> um, so there's lots of different things on there that you can have a look at. Um, so this is where you would find something like your rice cooker mode. There you go. There's your rice cooker. So click on that. And it will give you recipes for you know how to cook uh, long grain rice, basmati, millet, and, and bulgur wheat. So um, that uh, that would be quite could be quite useful if you're cooking larger quantities of rice. Okay, um, and then through this particular um, app on the or, or, so I'm using a, a MacBook here. So through your laptop, I don't believe you can do it on a tablet and you certainly can't do it on the phone. You can also search articles. So um, there are some really useful articles, getting started art articles on Thermomix that you can have a look through. 
um, that will also help you get to know your Thermomix and um, sort of use it for in various different ways. Okay, so that's that's good to know. And again, it's quite nice to have a bit of a read of some of these. There's some really interesting things um, that they publish. Okay, right. So let's just come off of that. And if you do want to, so if I just have a look, show you my recipes, you will you will see again. Um, it's laid out in a similar way. Here are the collections that you've created. Here are the collections that you've saved to your Thermomix so they can all be found, all your recipes can be found in one place. Okay. Um, so I think that's probably it. Has anybody, is, is there anything in the chat this evening? Oh, we're up to 12 people, that's great. Has anybody got any questions for me that you would like to ask? Anything that hasn't quite made sense? Um, or anything that's come to mind that you feel that you want me to clarify again. Um, I will just stop recording now so that you can ask where I don't think I've got anything else left to uh, 